So now, let the space x be separable. Then, there exists a countable, dense subset d of the space x. Now, since the function f is a bijection, the cardinality of the set D is equal to the cardinality of the direct image of the set D. And so F of D is countable. Now, since the function F is continuous, the direct image of the closure of D in the space X is a subset of the closure of the direct image of D in the space Y. Now as the set D is dense in the space X, the closure of D in X is the entire space X. And so we have the direct image of the entire space X, which is the space Y, is a subset of the closure of the direct image of D in the space Y. Now since the reverse inclusion is always true, we have that the closure of the direct image of the set D in the space Y is the entire space Y. And hence, the direct image of the set D is dense in the space Y. So the direct image of the set D is a countable dense subset of the space Y. And thus, the space Y is separable. And so the countability condition satisfied by a given space is a topological invariant, as I have previously claimed. So new definition. Let x be a topological space. And let the collection script A be a covering. of the space X, then any subset of the covering script A that also covers the space X is called a sub cover of the cover script A. and a topological space X is compact if and only if every open cover of the space X has a finite subcover. So as a theorem, we will prove that the image of a compact space under a continuous map is also compact. proof. 
let x and y be topological spaces. And let the function f mapping x into y be continuous. And since the direct image of the entire space x is a subset of the range space y, the function g from the domain space x into f of x defined by g of x is equal to f of x, that is the function formed by restricting the range of the function f is continuous and surjective. Now let the collection script A containing the sets A sub i for i and some indexing set i be an open cover of the direct image of the domain space X, which is the same as the direct image of the domain space X under the map F. That is F of X, which is G of X, is the union of the sets a sub i, where each set a sub i is open in the space y, and so the inverse image under the map g of g of x is the inverse image of the union of the sets a sub i. Now the inverse image of the direct image of the entire domain space X is the d domain space X. And this is equal to the union of the inverse image of the sets A sub I, where each set, the inverse image of the set A sub I under the map G, is open in the space x since the function f, correction, since the function g is continuous. That is the collection G inverse of A, where A is an element in the collection script A, is an open cover of the space X. Now suppose that the space X is compact. Then, finitely many of these sets, say G inverse of A sub 1 through G inverse of A sub n, cover the space X. That is, Space X is the finite union of the inverse images of the sets A sub I under the map G. And so we have that G of X is G of the finite union of the inverse images of the sets A sub I. Now G of the domain space X is the same 
as f of the domain space x, and this is the union, the finite union, of the direct image of the inverse image of the sets a sub i under the map g. Now since the function g is surjective, this is the finite union of the sets a sub i, and hence the collection a sub 1 through a sub n is a finite subcover of the collection script A. And thus, the direct image of the domain space X is a compact subspace of the space Y. So as a corollary, let the space X be homeomorphic to the space Y. If the space X is compact, then so is the space Y. So proof. Since the space X is homeomorphic to the space Y, there exists a homeomorphism which we'll call F, mapping X into Y. So suppose that the space X is compact, then since the function F is a continuous bijection, F of X is the entire space Y and is compact. Now recall that the image of a connected space under a continuous map is connected. So as a theorem, let the space X be homeomorphic to the space Y. If the space X is connected, then so is Y. It's proof. Once again, since the space X is homeomorphic to the space Y, there exists a homeomorphism. which we'll call F, mapping X into Y. Suppose that the space X is connected. Then, since the function F is a continuous bijection, The direct image of the domain space X is the entire range space Y and is connected. And so compactness and connectedness are also topological invariants for a given space. The new theorem, let x be homeomorphic to the space y, then the spaces x and y have the same number of 
of isolated points. So proof. Since the space X is homeomorphic to the space Y, there exists a homeomorphism. which we will call F, mapping X into Y. Now let X be an isolated point. of the space X. Then the singleton containing that point is open in the space X. And since the inverse of the function F is continuous, the direct image of the singleton containing the point X is open in the space Y. And since the function F is bijective, the direct image of the singleton containing the point X is the singleton containing the value F of X That is, f of x is an isolated point of the space y. So conversely, let the point y in the space y be an isolated point. of the space, then the singleton containing that point is open in the space y. Now since the function f is continuous, the inverse image of the singleton containing the point y is open in the space x. And since the function f is a bijection, the inverse image of the singleton containing the point y is the singleton containing the value f inverse of y. That is, f inverse of y is an isolated point. of the space X. Now since for every point Y in the space Y there exists exactly one point X in the space X such that Y is equal to F of X, we have that a point X and the space X is an isolated point of the space X if and only if the point Y, which is F of X and the space Y is an isolated point. And the space Y. And hence the spaces X and Y have the same number of isolated points. And so the number of isolated points in a space is also a topological invariant.